came to grad school from a figurative background, but when I entered into grad school, I decided to leave the figure behind and explore other options and um, other medium and ways of working as just to try to expand my horizons. And now, this is really one of the first figurative pieces that I have come back to since I've been in grad school. So I've taken a lot of what I've learned and a lot of what I've explored here at grad school and brought it to the figure to uh, kind of create something different. The installation part was interesting. They had to be um, finished in the gallery. They came in in two separate parts. The top part, the human part, is made out of ceramic, and the bottom part is made out of foam and paper and some other accumulated materials. And you've placed them in such a way so that people can walk around them. Right, is right. Is that intentional? Yeah, so I, I really like the fact that, that people have to walk around these. This one figure standing up on, its, on the hind legs, um, it confronts the, the entrance of the um, gallery, and he's, he's the first one. And so what I'm trying to play with here is the, the struggle of power that takes place. I've been dealing with three archetypes of power. There's um, control, there's appeasement, and there's observation. And so that's what each one of these represents on the outside. But at the same time, they all encompass all three of those. The appeasement is sort of in a position of of appeasing somebody, but at the same time, there's there's sort of a danger there. I mean, like this leg up is that a uh, is that a submission or is that a threat of, of a kick? You know, uh -huh. or the fact that the appeaser is asking something of the viewer, and if that viewer fulfills the appeaser, then isn't that a, doesn't the appeaser become the controller in essence? So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of this play that I've been trying to incorporate and bring into figurative sculpture, something that's been around for a long time but still hasn't been explored fully. You know, I mean, there's right. still a lot more to be seen from it. One of the things that I was really um, torn about with, with working with a figure before I came to grad school was, um, I guess, what I've called a self-contained narrative. It's a, a narrative that, that is completely contained within the piece, and the viewer is just simply an observer. But uh, what I'm tr attempting to do with this piece is this is a piece where I, I would say it's an open-ended narrative where the viewer actually has to come in and complete the narr narration. Um, the figures are actually asking something of the viewer, and it's not complete until the viewer starts interacting with the piece. I really love working with myth, and I love uh, seeing Greek sculpture. But the idea of the centaur I found really fascinating because for me this is a, a transitional piece, it's a coming of age piece. And the centaur I think embodies that idea, this creature that exists within a liminal state. That mm -hmm. is, it's not quite animal, not quite human, it's sort of in the threshold of two places of being, which is really crucial to this piece. I mean, these, these creatures are all in transition.